Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. Uh, it's such a joy to be here this morning. Such an honor, such a privilege. My name is Wangeshi Mwaneki. I'm born again by the grace of God. And I am a child of DCIKZ and now Shiloh. It's such an honor to be here to bring the word of God. I just want to honor our bishop and mom in absentia just for allowing us room to serve and to come together and share and fellowship. Isn't it such an honor? It is. It is. So I thank God for them. I also want to thank God for the pastors, our pastors in the house, Pastor Beatrice, Reverend Beatrice Waithaka, you can clap for her. You know, mighty woman of God that I honor and love. I also want to thank God for Pastor Mwashigadi, you can celebrate him as well. A mighty, mighty man of God that I also honor. Thank you so much. I want to celebrate my mom. I forced her to come with me to this service. She goes to the main campus uh, for the second service. Hey, camera, I'm tired. <laughs> my introverted mom. Mom, you can wave at people. There we go. Sazingine una bully your parents. There is an age we get you can bully them. Unambia tunenda shailo na nimesema. Amen. Good. So I want us to go right into the word of God. We are going to go right to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. And my working title is Beholding the Greatness of God. Beholding the Greatness of God. Our main text is Isaiah 40. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures from verse 9 all the way to 31. I'm reading in the English Standard Version. I will try my best to hurry up because there's a couple of verses and then we'll get right into it. Amen? Lazma muniongeleshe. Amen? I'm a teacher by heart. Amen? There we go. And so this is what the word of God says. Go up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. I want you to repeat with me. Say, behold your God. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in skills and the hills in a balance? Who has measured the spirit of the Lord or what man shows him his counsel? Whom did he consult and who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as the dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. Lebanon would not suffice for fuel, nor are its bits enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness compares with him? An idol, a craftsman casts it, and a goldsmith overlays it with gold, and casts for its silver chains. He who is too impoverished for an offering chooses wood that it will not rot. Thank you so much. I was feeling that echo, and I was wondering what was happening. May the Lord bless you. Amen. He who is too impoverished for an offering chooses wood that will not rot. He seeks out a skillful craftsman to set up an idol that will not move. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Let me pause for a minute. You know those people who say that the earth is flat? The flat others. The Bible literally talks about God sitting above the circle of the earth. Can you imagine the Bible is literally saying to science, you are right, the world is circular. Isn't God amazing? Okay, 
who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. Verse 25. To whom then will you compare me? That I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created this. He who brings out their host by number, calling them by name, by the greatness of his might. And because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. By they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Blessed be the word of God. I am a missionary by the grace of God. So I am a full-time missionary, and where I do the amazing Christian organizations that I get to serve with and work with, uh, believes that God has called us into Africa. We believe with all our hearts that the Lord has allowed us a place to go and evangelize into the continent of Africa. Amen? So last year, we took an interesting, hilariously, chaotically long trip down south by road, and this was day three. So this was day three, and we were getting into the country of Malawi. And so it was early in the morning on a Sunday. We drove through Malawi. Malawi is chaotically hilly through the meanders all the way to the capital that is Lilongwe. By the time we got there, it was pretty late, and I was co-driving with uh, one of the drivers. And so I didn't sleep because the whole van slept. Sasa, atuwezi ya chia pia meisha yetu kwa driver, tukilala si wote, lazima mtu wakaya kimuambia. Unaona hiyo bump, amen? So I was a co-driver. So by the time we got to Lilongwe, it was around 3 a.m., 4 a.m. I know, crazy. So we got there, people started to shower, an amazing reverend was hosting us. So people got to shower, people got to eat breakfast, it was wonderful. And around six, I think because I was just really, really tired and exhausted, I decided, watch and talk engine, and then you only uku kuna and so on and so forth. And so I proceeded to go outside by myself. I was just enjoying the view and all those things. And the sun started to come up. We all know the sun. Has anybody ever seen the sun? Amen. So the sun started to come up. And for three minutes, I have never in my entire life seen something like that. It was the most beautiful, most glorious sun I had ever seen. It makes the sun that rises in Kenya look like a joke, I promise. There was like lashes of pink and orange and it was so beautiful and it was still and it was quiet. And for a minute, I thought it is because I was tired. I found myself kneeling and crying like a child. I have never cried because of the sun, ever. I'm sure many of you don't wake up and say, oh, the sun is so beautiful. Let us cry in honor of the sun. Quick, 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 quick. None, right? And so I was amazed. I kept wondering, what is this I'm experiencing? And for what was like 20 minutes, I just cried and cried, and all I could say is, God, you are so great. God, you are so great. Here's the thing. The thing about the greatness of God is that an experience of the greatness of God changes us. There are many ways that the Lord shows us his greatness. And this morning, I want us to cover three of those ways, and then we're going to cover four ways in which the greatness of God changes us. What I did not know at that time is that I had experienced an aspect of the greatness of God. And there is something that shifts once you see God for who he really is, and you see yourself for who you really are. We live in a society where every pastor, let me not, hmm, watch and show me, I guess you show me. But we live in a society where we hear this 
motivational speakers tell us, look in the mirror, declare to yourself, you are great. You are gorgeous. There is nothing like you. You have the power inside of you. You are amazing. You are destined for greatness. And they make you look for greatness within, while the Bible clearly tells us that within ourselves, absolutely nothing good can come out of us. So we genuinely need to step outside of ourselves, focus on one who is greater than everything, then truly we can be great. Every idea and ideology that tells you to look within for greatness is founded on the lies of hell. It is. Every person that tells you, you are good, you're just a little bit dirty, is a liar. You are not good. Your heart, in fact, when the Bible addresses it, says that the heart of man is thoroughly wicked, desperately wicked. So you are not good. Your heart is not kind. You need the greatness of God to shine in your life for goodness to come out of you. And so today I want us to behold the greatness of God. Amen. Number one, one of the ways that we can behold the greatness of God is what happened to me in Malawi, creation. Everybody say creation. Everybody say creation. I want us to quickly run to Psalms chapter 19. Psalms chapter 19. And I'm going to read it in the English Standard Version. But I also want to read what the message paraphrase says, because the message paraphrase is a bit chaotic, and it's good chaos for us this morning. Amen? So the Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom, leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of the earth, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. We're going to read the same thing, but in the message paraphrase. God's glory is on tour. Guys, can you just pause and appreciate this verse? Amen. Do you guys read the Bible sometimes? Unajishika, unajuliza. What was going on through their life? Or is it just me? Okay, I can see some smiles, so it's not just me. Amen. God's glory is on tour in the skies. God craft on exhibit across the horizon. Madam Day. How chaotic is the word of God? Like, I can't. But Madam Day holds classes every morning. It's as if to say, you don't need to go to any class to understand that God is speaking through everything he has made. Like Madam Day is holding classes, you just need to attend. Professor Knight, I, my God, Professor Knight lectures every evening. Their words aren't heard, their voices aren't recorded, but their silence fills the earth, unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. God makes a huge dome for the sun, a super dome. The morning suns, a new husband leaping from his honeymoon bed, as in the Bible is so chaotic, my goodness. The day-breaking sun, an athlete racing to the tape. That's how God's word vaults across the, sky, the skies from sunrise to sunset, meeting ice, scorching deserts, warming hearts to faith. In essence, what I am trying to say is that there is absolutely no excuse for you and I or anyone on the face of the earth to say they have never encountered God. If you just look at the sun, if you look at the skies, you look at the moon, you look at everything that the Lord has created, God is there. He is teaching daily. He's saying, I am here. Learn from me. As the sun is rising in the morning and setting in the evening. It is basically saying, learn from me. I am here. I am showing his greatness so that nobody is with excuse. Hallelujah. So that nobody is with excuse to say that they have not encountered the greatness of God. Amen. I want us to quickly run to the book of Job. We're going to run to the book of Job chapter 12. I'm going to read from verse 7. 
And this is what the Bible says. But ask the beasts and they will teach you. The birds of the heavens and they will tell you. Or the bushes of the earth and they will teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all this does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. I want to submit to you today, as we live in a society that constantly questions the presence of God, scripture is every, very clear that just by the natural things that he has made, we know that he is alive. We know of his greatness. We know of his beauty. We know that he is true. Amen? The second way that we can experience the greatness of God is through his wisdom and might. Through his wisdom and might. I want you to jump back to Isaiah chapter 40 and we're going to read from verse 12 to verse 17. Verse 12 to 17. And this is what the Bible says. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span and closed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scale and the hills in a balance? Who has measured the spirit of the Lord or what man shows him counsel? Whom did he consult and who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted to as dust, absolute dust. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. Lebanon would not suffice for fuel, nor are its beasts enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing in emptiness. I want us to run to, again, Job chapter 40, verse 13 to 25. John, Job, sorry. Job 40, 13 to... Is it 40? No, 12, sorry. Go to 12 from verse 10. 12. Does not the ear test words as the plates test for food? Wisdom is with the aged. Sorry, I started from verse 11. Wisdom is with the aged and understanding in length of days. He loses the bones of kings and binds a waistcloth on their hips. He leads priests away striped and overthrows the mighty. He deprives of speech those who are trusted and takes away the discernment of the elders. He pours contempt on princes and loosens the belt of the strong. He uncovers the deeps of the darkness and brings darkness to light. He makes nations great and destroys them. He enlarges nations and leads them away. He takes away understanding from the sheep, chiefs, sorry, hey, Mangeshi chiefs of the people of the earth and makes them wander in a trackless waste. They grope in the dark without light and he makes them stagger like a drunken man. It is beautiful to behold the wisdom and might of God that go hand in hand. And this is what I mean. That God is not just omniscient. He's not just all-knowing. He's not just absolutely, we're not able to comprehend his understanding. He's also mighty and wise in the application of that. This is what it means. That God is intentional in everything he has made. One. Two, he's intentional in everything and the way he has made us. Three, there is absolutely nothing that goes on in the earth that God has not orchestrated. He's wise like that. He's wise to know that Stephen needed to be at Shiloh Worship Center on a day like today. He's wise enough to know that you needed the parents that you got, the background that you got, the family that you are in. He's wise enough to orchestrate every experience in your life. That there's absolutely nothing that goes on in your life that the hand of God is not over. He's wise and mighty to know what nation to make stand and what nation to make fall. And here's the thing. We are not even able to comprehend that sort of wisdom and understanding. And so we can truly behold in the greatness of God as seen in his wisdom, as seen in his understanding, as seen as he carefully orchestrates every single thing in our life. 
This is to say that no pain, no suffering comes to us by coincidence. No joy, no love, no gift, no skill comes to us by mistake. God is not a God of happenstance. He's wise and mighty, carefully ensuring that everything that goes on in your life, he has planned. And so we can bask in that greatness because point number three, he is a loving God. Here's the thing about the greatness of God. We can bask in his greatness through creation. When we look at the mountains, we look at the sea, we look at the sun, we see his greatness. We can bask in his greatness when we understand his wisdom and understanding. But all these things come together to make sense when we understand that the greatness of God is revealed to us through the Father's love. When you understand God for who he really is, mighty, awesome, bringing wonder out of us, incomparable to absolutely nothing else, and you understand yourself for who you really are, nothing. If the Lord brings princes and nations to absolute nothing, then who are we? This is why David would cry out in the Psalms and say, who is a man that you are mindful of him? You and I both know ourselves. Amen? Amen? We both know ourselves. We know our weaknesses, right? We know the areas that God needs to shine his light more on because we are still working in progress. Amen? We know the areas that we need to continuously submit to God because we are not yet there. And this is what God is saying, that as all those things are happening, his greatness is shown to us through the Father's love. I want you to just go to Isaiah chapter 40. We are going to read another passage of scripture. Isaiah 40 from verse uh, 10. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arm. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. It is interesting that Isaiah tries to bring to us the greatness of God, and then compares God to a shepherd. You see, with everything that we know about ourselves, if we are being truly honest, we know that we should have been wiped out of the face of the earth a long time ago. Make it personal. I want you to think about your life and think about all your shortcomings and think about the many times you tell God, God, history meisha, ni meacha, mimi kukasirika ni meacha. And then think of yourself on the highway, two seconds later. I mean, the forgetfulness of man is just beyond amazing. Shouting at the driver, Una nipita kwa nini? Pa, pa, pa. Amen? Christians in the house. Okay, I'm talking, I'm talking to young people, probably who have not driven yet, a big yet. Amen? But think of yourself after you have told God, this is how I ought to live my life. This is the way I live my life. And think of how many seconds or minutes or days it takes you to go back on that word. Does it happen? Does it happen? So it means if we truly know who we are, we deserve to be wiped out the face of the earth. Right? Compared to the greatness of God, we are not even worthy to stand in his presence. But this is what scripture says. He is like a shepherd tending to us. That beyond being him, beyond him being great, beyond being amazing, beyond being awesome, beyond being full of might and power, he comes down to our level, sends himself in the person of Jesus Christ to be a sacrifice for us. And that is not enough. He also sends Jesus Christ as a loving shepherd to teach us his ways. That is not enough. He continues to tender his flock, continues to take care of his flock, continues to lead us to paths of righteousness, continues to take care of us. That is not enough. He promises that he's coming back for his flock. The greatness of God, once you've understood it, and then you look at yourself and see all that you are, it arises in us, humility. 
Because we think to ourselves, what are we that God is mindful of us? What are we that God is mindful of us? It is interesting to know that God did not just sit in heaven and think, I am great, I am wise, I am mighty, I am awesome, I can do all these things. He comes to my level as Wangeshi and dies for me. He comes to my level, provides grace for me. He comes to my level and leads me like a shepherd leads the flock with a staff and a rod. And the staff and the rod is symbolic because sometimes the shepherd needs to be strict with the sheep. The Lord disciplines those that he loves. And so sometimes he's a bit rough telling me, go this way because there there is a wolf. And many times he's gentle leading me to the ways and paths of righteousness. This is what the greatness of God does for us. There are four points I've talked about too, but I'm going to just expand them in the next few. Number one, just like we have said, this is the effect of the greatness of God in us once we have experienced it. Number one, we see God for who he really is. There is a sense of honor that we have for God once we understand who he is. I want to give you a challenge. This week, as you go out into the world, spare three minutes to look at the sun. Spare how many minutes? Three minutes to look at the sun. Enjoy it. I want you to look at the sun and ask yourself, how far is it from where I am? Just ask yourself. As you go to work, as you go to school, I want you to look at the trees where you are. Eh, Zimapia kuna trees. But Shiloh kuna trees. Amen? So I want you to look at the trees on your way to town. Find a tree. Look at it. The Bible tells us in the book of Job that these things teach us all the time. Amen? I want you to look at everything that the Lord has made around you. I want you to look at the sky. Spare two minutes and ask yourself why the sky has never fallen on us. It's a very interesting question, right? But the things of God are really foolishness to those that are perishing. Ask yourself, how come the sky has never fallen of us? Since the beginning of time, it has stood to be where it is. Ask yourself, there's never a day we have woken up and then the sun was like, remix, leo sianzi east, nanza west. Has that ever happened? Has you ever, have you ever woken up and realized, oh, wait a minute, the sun today is starting from the west, going to the east? ever happened? It is so consistent, it is so meticulous, it is so beautiful that every single day without fail, the sun rises from the east to the west. Every single day without fail, by the grace of God, the sky has not fallen on us. Every single day, if you look at just the natural things that God has made, they will start to speak to you. And what they will start to say is that God is great. We can't compare to that kind of thinking. We can't compare to that kind of might. We can't compare to that kind of awesomeness. How many of us have ever been to the Rift Valley? Ushai pitia Rift Valley. Apo after Limuru, ushai pitia. Okay, minimal limit. We know I'm kind of busy. Thank you very much, many of us. Have you ever looked at those escarpments? And you're like me. You remember the social, the social studies that you learned, and they told you that from Egypt, something something happened on the earth, right? And there was this sunkening fall. And the parts that fell, the path that remains, are the escarpments, right? That's what they tell us in geography. Have you ever asked yourself, how can God still be sustaining the escarpment still today? Like that thing is so glorious, so beautiful. And the God who made that, made you, sustains you, seeks after you, seeks after me. So what sort of foolishness does man need to have to not acknowledge that? Are you seeing what I'm trying to say? What sort of thing needs to happen to us to just 
open our eyes and realize that that God that is so great made us. When you pause and just experience the greatness of God, you really understand God for who he really is. Number two, just like we said, you really understand yourself for what you are. That Wangeshi minus God equals to absolutely nothing. If he makes princes to fall down and nations to be flat, it just takes a second, a word from his mouth to absolutely finish me from the face of the earth. And then number three in this point is that we understand God's mercy and we receive his strength in a new way. I want to present to us that it is the sheer mercy of God that allows us to be here today. It is the mercy of God that allows you to breathe in and out this morning at Shiloh Worship Center without the need of an oxygen tank. It is the mercy of God this morning that allows you to be and understand and see and breathe and hear and live. In him truly we move and breathe and have our being. It is not our own wisdom because in comparison to the omniscience of God, it is absolutely nothing. It is not our understanding. It is not our might. It is not our finances that sustain us. It is the mercy and hand of God. It is his love. Hallelujah. And once we understand that, because we are fallen, you see the Bible also says, David also says, that God remembers that we are dust. He remembers that about us. So with that knowledge, we are able to not only run to him for mercy, we are able to run for, to him for strength. And comes a beautiful verse that we all love. He gives power to the faint. This is Isaiah 40 from verse 29. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary. And young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now because we understand God for who he is and we understand ourselves for what we are, we can approach the throne of grace, that is what Hebrews says, so that we can obtain mercy for when we need it most. How many times do you need mercy? Every single moment. Every single moment you need God's mercy. And it's so beautiful that the mercies of God are new every morning. You don't have to save up the masses of today. You're saying, watch an EGK. Hey, masses in Ezapote. Masses see Kamaunga, Kenya. Amen. We are assured that tomorrow morning we, we will get the masses of God. Unga, we are not sure. But the masses of God, we are sure about it. And so we can approach the throne of grace with boldness because we know that we are nothing without him because we are un we understand that we are nothing but just dust we can approach him for strength and grace so that as the bible says in isaiah 40 we can walk and not faint we can run and not be weary we can soar on wings as eagles finally i'm almost done we look at the greatness of god and the fourth thing that it does to us, we are inspired to live an evangelistic life. Nataka uangalie ni bayako umuambie, leo kuna practicals. Wow, 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 wow. Na tutafanyo practicals. Saitu. Amen. We are inspired to live an evangelistic life. Once you have truly seen the greatness of God, Something that happens to you, you can no longer live without telling others about Jesus. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 verse 18, and this is Jesus speaking to Nicodemus saying, that those who do not believe are condemned because they do not believe that the Son is God. Here is the thing. This is not in the Bible, but let's just learn from this passage. If those who do not believe are condemned... 
There are those who are condemned because they do not believe. Sindio, mmeona venye nime change? So if those that are condemned are condemned because they do not believe, I want to submit to us that they need to believe by hearing. So there are many people who have not heard the gospel, so they don't believe, so they are condemned. And who is to blame? You and I. As Jesus is leaving the earth, in the book of Mark, the last chapter, if I'm not wrong, I'm sorry, media team. You know the way like media team asks for your scriptures, you give them, and then you come here and you start sharing things that you didn't intend to share? I'm sorry, media team. So I want us to jump to the last chapter of Mark, and that should be Mark 16, if I'm not wrong. I didn't intend on sharing this, that's why it's a bit harder to find it. And this is what the Bible says, Mark 16, verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Think about it, brothers and sisters. Whoever does not believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ would be condemned. But there are many who don't believe. believe. Eh? There are many who don't believe because they have not heard. Whose fault is that? It is you and I. Because the place of going out into the world and telling others about Jesus is not a suggestion. It is a commission. The Lord Jesus expects it of us. He expects you, you and I, to go out into all the nation and tell others about Jesus. I am not saying all of you quit your jobs, quit everything, join me, let us become missionaries. Absolutely not. What I am saying is that we can incorporate that in our daily living. We can live evangelistic lives. Who here has a Buddha guy? You have a regular Buddha guy. Hey, young people, in our husu, Does that Boda guy know that you know Jesus? Have you ever shared your, the gospel with that Boda guy that you see consistently and meet consistently? Who here has a mamamboga, a specific mamamboga? The hands went up. Does that mamamboga know you're a believer? Ama all you talk about ni avocado zimenda strathmo na Harvard. This is the reality, that if we experience the greatness of God, we cannot keep it to ourselves. We have to go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the ev evangelism in this sense is two-way. You need to share the gospel to your friends and family who are not born again, right? And those ones are difficult because they know your weaknesses. They know unamkanga sangapi, unachanga socks kwa mlango, haupikangi stiu mzuri. Those ones are a bit difficult to evangelize to. So the only way you can evangelize to your friends and family is by living a life that honors God. Period. With the end occasions, their families and cousins, wewe mwenye unasav Shiloh Worship Center, ndio unasema hiyo mzinga kubwa ni yekewe kando. They are wondering... We know you're a believer, but are you living it? With our friends and family, there's no other way. We have to preach through the way we live. I'm sorry, mom. I'm about to use an example. <laughs> One time, I took my parents out. I didn't take them out. It was their date. Me, nika ingililia. Nika, you know, nika jifik sukondani kwa mpango yao. Ndiyo nikule. Because their work is to feed me. Amen. <laughs> so one time... <laughs> I interfered on their date, and it was time to go home, Gioni. And so, as the technological daughter that I am, I tried to get an Uber for us to go home. And the Uber was a lady. And so, where we were was like a joint, like a restaurant-ish place, whatever. So, as we were talking with the lady on the Uber, najaribu kumwelezea kwenye tuko, hakuwa naelewa, but eventually, akakuja, akatupa, akatupata. And then she made a joke, akasema, hey, directions. This is what my dad said. My dad, it's Greek for, sorry. When she is born again, she does not drink. I really thought about that thing. Because it actually means with my family, I can't go and tell my parents, now listen to the word of God, oh Mwaneki household. This is what the Lord says. It is good, but eh, how I can evangelize to them 
or my family is by living a life that honors God behind closed doors. And that's what we need to do. Part of living an evangelistic life is not just so that people know that we are born again. We live it the way we are in our talking, in our conversations, in how we conduct our things, that that reflects that we know God. Amen? That is one aspect. The other aspect of evangelism is preaching to people that are strangers. Sometimes that is difficult, right? Right? It is difficult to preach to strangers. I want you to put your book down and then stand and find a partner. Leo kuna practicals kwa salmon. Hallelujah! Find somebody to stand with. Pastor Beatrice, I'm sorry, na kunyanganya Pastor Moshigadi. Pastor Moshigadi can join me and get a mic. And then stand. Ni practical. Tafuta neighbor. Tafuta neighbor. Tafuta. We can't just be coming here, sitting nice, hear the gospel, and then we go. I want you to find a neighbor. You have to be two. You can't be three. You have to be two. Aya. Are we almost done? <laughs> Na kwambia ni youth service. Are we two? Aya, if you're two, lift your hand. Kama mkoa wili. I want us to evangelize to one another because we are going to do a practical. After we have done this practical, this is the exam. I want you this week. Aya, Kimu, come down. I want you this week. <laughs> Kimu is my friend. Neza muenjoy. I want you this week to find somebody that you don't know and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. For us to actually achieve seeing the world changed by the gospel, we are the ones to go. For Africa to be saved by the gospel, we are the ones to go. Amen? So Pastor Brian is joining me here. And I want you to get this acronym, KING. Don't write it, just get it in your mind, okay? KING. So, I'm the one evangelizing. When you approach somebody, the first K stands for kindness. Some of us, we want to scare people into knowing Jesus. Have you seen that meme of that guy with a bunduki? Have you seen it? In the bag, and then they go and tell somebody, oh yeah, so today I'm sharing the gospel. Then that guy is like, ah, no, see Leo. He puts the bag down, he takes an AK-47, he's like, I am sharing the word of God. Say, Lord Jesus. Hey, please, that's not what we are doing. The first K is for kindness. Say with me. What it means, go up to somebody, say hi to them, introduce yourself. Kwa sababu wa mjuani, sindio? So mi na Pastor Brian na tujuani, hata sijai muona maisha yangu yote. Msalimie, be kind, introduce yourself, ask for their name. Usiku una address watu ukishare evangelism na mwambia, saa wewe, please ask for their name. Sawa, sawa, practical. Pastor Brian, do life, skujui, do life. Walking, walking. <laughs> Ah, hi brother. Bwana Yesu. Asifiwe sana. Ma poa. <laughs> that's actually really good because you can't assume they know Jesus, ndio? Yeah, that's very good. Hey, actor. Aya. My name is Wangeshi and I'd want to know your name. Um, my name is Ishmael. That is a wonderful name. Ishmael is actually somebody in the Bible. Do you know that? Oh, is that so? Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's somebody called Ishmael in the Bible. Okay. So now, today, I just want to share the gospel of Jesus. And so I'm asking, can I have two, three minutes of your time? Just two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you seeing? Have you gotten? Have you gotten an idea? Go to them, introduce yourself, be kind, ask for their name, try to see a place of relation. It could be a name, it could be what they're doing, probably they're in business. Sawa, sawa. So I want one of you to lift your hand, one of you in the two pair. Moja anu mkono. Aya, uo mwingine ndo wana evangelize. So, uo mwenye ajainuwa mkono. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. We want to finish, want to finish. Uo mwenye ajainuwa mkono. Apply what we have just learned with your neighbor. Let's go, let's go. One people evangelizing.
good. I'm evangelized. Very quickly, we are going to I. Listen, listen, listen. I, hold on, hold on, hold on. We are in I because this is king. Okay? I stands for, hey, this is exciting. To find more practicals. I, skiza, skiza, skiza. We are in I. Listen, listen. I means use inclusive words. Many times when we go to people who don't know the word, this is what we tell them. Okopoa. Okopoa. Nataka kushia gospel. Neza shia gospel na wewe. Wewe ni mwenye dhambi. Wewe ulikosea mungu. Wewe ni sina. Na God anakuita leo. Sasa, even if it were you, would you hear the gospel when somebody is constantly addressing wewe? So use inclusive words. It could be, you know this is what the Bible says, that we are all fallen. We are all fallen. That we have all fallen from the goodness of God. But God came so that he can save you and I. We are, we, we, us, our. Hallelujah. Number three is N. N stands for no argument. Believers. We are ready to argue with everybody to prove that Jesus is God. You are just sharing the gospel. You are not arguing. Sawa, sawa. And then fi finally, G, which is very important, stands for the gospel. You need to simplify the gospel. What is the gospel? That Jesus came to die for our fallen people and that by the grace of God, now we can get born again. And then after you have done that, invite them to give their life to Jesus. There are people who you will meet and they're already believers. Enjoy the fellowship, encourage one another, hallelujah. Now the other one who didn't evangelize with the knowledge of the entire acronym, give each other space is the one to use the entire thing and share the gospel. Sawa, sawa? Aya. Go. Do life, do life, do life. Walk to them, share the gospel. Share the gospel, share the gospel with the whole acronym. Hey, Pastor Beach, you soon compare a hard time. Usitoroke mwenye nakuja kuku evangelizia. Pastor Beatrice, you can't give her a hard time. Evangelize, evangelize. Have you finished? Have you finished? I am Malizia, Malizia, Malizia. Okay. I want Pastor Brian to apply all that he has learned to evangelize. Could you evangelize? Yes. Aya, let us see if he has gotten it. Aya, listen, listen, listen. Me, I'm doing life. Okay, do life towards me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. Excuse me, madam. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, what's your name? Wageshi. 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 Oh, that's mm. such a... Is that, what tribe is that? Is that Kikuyu? Kikuyu. Correct. Oh, Kikuyu. Correct. Okay, great. Mm. From like the Mount Kenya region. Correct. Ah, wonderful. Mount yes. Kenya is a beautiful, beautiful mm, place. Very I beautiful. Been, I've always wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I would imagine people from there also kind people. They are. They really wonderful. are. They really... I'm happy mm. to see you. Anyway, I'm just walking around. I'm waiting for someone here. Mm -hmm. And I just saw you and I thought, you know, just to say hello. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just... Can I have like a minute of your time? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> Seconds is great. Thank okay. you for 30 seconds. Okay. You know, I okay. just wanted to um, talk to you about uh, Jesus Christ and just share words of life with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether you've heard about it, but you know, Jesus Christ, the one begotten Son of God who left heaven, came and died for our sins, for you and for me, and he loved us so much that he wouldn't have heaven without us. So ah, lakini Jesus see God, wewe, watcha imambo yako wewe. Okay, lakini sasa unajowezu kasema Jesus see your God, kwa sababu uh, lazima niongeze 30 seconds ndio nikuexplain hiyo ingine for more 
Sao, sao, sao. Yeah, so anyway, um ningetaka kusikia mbona unasema Jesus is God. Jumi na mini tu hivyo. Nani aliku nikulisikia mahadi ama ni kama I think venye tu niligrow tu na mini tu Jesus is God. Okay, lakini unajua the good thing about hata psychologists na hawa say philosophers huko nje wanatuambianga like kuna more than ile world view yenye uko nayo like there's mm. more out here. And just because to live grow in a certain way man she yende ukweli. Kuna ile ukweli yenye ina stand. Na ile ukweli yenye nakuja kushare na wewe leo. Um na hiyo ukweli ina apply si kwako peke yako, ina apply pia kwangu. So ni ukweli inclusive. Unaona? Okay, sorry. Ni ukweli yenye pia mimi nina na jaribu ku incorporate into my life um kila siku so yeah um so jesus is god ukisoma bible uh, na kama hauna naweza nikakupatia after this by the way naweza nikaorganize uh, ukisoma bible inakupatia story ya creation vinye god mwenyewe from the very beginning Mwenye god from the very beginning and me to bring in yani ametupenda sana kutoka kwa bible yeye ndio alikutu create wewe na mimi atuko create na parents wetu parents wetu mm. ni nika caretakers ni stewards so god ametu create mwenyewe lakini at some point juu ya human nature na shetani akatuchanganyisha aka tu hivi tukaanguka lakini sasa god aka create his son jesus christ ndio akuje into the earth to redeem to bring us back to himself ni kama mzee wako amepotea alafu unatuma mzee ende amlete home That's what Jesus Christ did for us. And that's what he did. So I don't know whether you'd like to have a full relationship. Hizi vitu zenye tuna explain ni yetu tu yenye naweza ni kuexplainia. Lakini kuna Holy Spirit wa God yenye naweza kuexplainia in depth and in detail. Kwa ina practical way kwa na relationship na eh na huyo God mwenye tunaongea about. Yes. For sure invitation to the gospel. Yes. Okay great. Kama ni sawa naweza nikakuombea tu hapa kama hauogopi. Ni sawa. Uh, na si lazima ufunge macho tunaweza tu kwa hapa. Bwana. Eh juu naweza nibia. Clap for him. <laughs> Can sit down. <clears throat> What I was trying to achieve is that now we have a formula or rather a short way that we can share the gospel, right? After you are done, remember to give an invitation. Sawa sawa. If the person is a believer, pray with them for any other need they may have. See, even believers have needs. Yeah. yeah, so invite them to pray for them for any other need they may have. Amen. I want us to close our eyes for a minute because we've come to the end of this sermon. And you could be here, we've talked about the greatness of God as revealed in creation. We've talked about the greatness of God as revealed in his wisdom and might. We've talked about the greatness of God as revealed by the Father's love. And you're here and all these things are wonderful, but you yourself have not given your life to Jesus. And this morning you have beheld the greatness of God and you cons- you are considering to surrender your life to Jesus. If you are here and you're that person, I want to give you an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. Part of enjoying the greatness of God is actually receiving him as the Lord and Savior of our lives. That now we get to live our lives in light of what he has done as believers. So if you're here, you've never given your life to Jesus and you're looking and seeing this is a good opportunity to do so. You can lift your hand, we'll pray together with you. You're here, this is a call for anybody who is here and would want to give their life to Jesus can shoot your hand up or even better you can stand wherever you are if there is anybody who would want to give their life to Jesus can stand wherever you are will see you and lead you to the lord hallelujah